So tell me, what's your favorite scary movie? Don't worry, this isn't a review on that movie. Actually, what this review is on is a fan favorite as well as one of my personal favorites, Insidious. Now, we're not talking about the first one or the second one or the, the prequel before that. We're actually talking about the new one, Insidious, The Red Door. So sit back. I know it's not Halloween, but let's go ahead and take a deep dive into Insidious, The Red Door. Hello there, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and children. Now, if you're a fan of James Wan like I am, this is probably a film that you're introduced to him with. Now, for the first Insidious movie, that's how I got to know exactly the directorial aspect of James Wan, which has led me to be a fan. Now, you may know him from Aquaman, Insidious, Malignant, or even the first Conjuring movie. He's done a wide variety of things. So, this film, now, not directed by him. I know, it's a little weird. However, don't worry, it's in good hands because all the cast is coming back and it's the original cast, don't worry. However, this movie does focus on, of course, Patrick Wilson's character, Josh, which by the way, it is Patrick Wilson's directorial debut. Yes, that's exactly right. The same guy who plays in this film, Conjuring, and the other half of Jason Momoa in Aquaman, this is his first film that he's actually directing, and that's what I mean by in good hands, because he does a wonderful job as far as directing this film. It's nothing like the cheesiness that we got from The Conjuring 2 or any of the other films. It actually plays and stays true to the original concept and the original source material. And like I said, uh, Rose Byrne is back as Renee, as well as Ty Simpkins as uh, Dalton. Now, this film actually takes place nine years after the second Insidious film. Yeah, I know. It's kind of crazy, right? Nine whole years since the second Insidious film. Honestly, in my personal opinion, one flashback as far as getting to know the paranormal investigators that I was perfectly fine with, but the other one, I believe, which was the Lost Key, the Last Key, then that kind of fell apart on me. So I'm glad that they're coming back to the original family. And with that, of course, it does lead into what happens. As far as we knew from the second one is both Dalton and Josh had forgotten what their abilities are able to do. If you're not familiar with that, of course, that is going into the further. Some sort of purgatory where, of course, lost souls go, where they have to experience other stuff that they did negatively or have to deal with spiritual beings that are not the friendliest at all. Basically, demons, demonic possessions. And, of course, with that, we are met with the one creature that gave us the jump scare when the first Insidious film came out. And I personally don't know his name, but it's the dude with the red face and the black makeup. That creepy ass dude. Yeah, I don't know his name because I didn't want to look into it. Because, let's face it, we weren't ready for that jump scare at the end of the first film because it was light out. It wasn't dark. But I'll tell you this one gripe I did have of this film, just one. And it's been a gripe since the end of the second one. And that is, of course, as we know, Elise, who is one of the paranormal investigators, the older lady, had passed away in the second one. She goes to a home only to be met with something that we never even seen. She goes over to, I believe it was a little girl, possibly in a wheelchair or in a chair. She goes, hi, how are you? And then she looks up and she gasps, like Macaulay Culkin gasps. And with that, we never knew, and we still don't know to this day what she saw. Personally, I thought we were going to see it in this film, but spoiler alert, we don't. And that's honestly my biggest gripe about this film, is because it doesn't show us what she saw. Now, whether or not if we were supposed to know is a different story. And if you guys know, please let me know. But anyways, like I said, this film actually plays and it continues the storyline. One thing I wasn't expecting, though, was, of course, Josh and Renee's character. They ended up being getting a divorce. Josh's mom. I'm not going to say what happens, but it kind of plays a key feature into why everything is reawakening as far as memories go. But overall, though, as far as Insidious films go, this is at the top tier, better than the prequels. As far as storyline goes, I am glad that we're back with the family. However, I will say this is the last time that we are potentially seeing this family stay after the end credits because something happens i'm not going to tell you what but there is an end credit sequence of this film however i don't know what's going to happen 
it could lead up to other ones. They did say this is going to be the last one within the family that we know, so we'll see, I guess. But if you've seen it, let us know down in the comments, subscribe, and we'll see you next time for the next review.